Hello everyone, what's up? My name is Victoria and I'm really excited today for another fans Q&A session. Uh, we're having a special guest, Melissa Ismailulu. Thank you very much for joining us. Welcome, how are you feeling today? Thank you for inviting me. Good, I'm good, how are you? Yeah, <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Thank you, looking forward to our discussion because we've received many, many interesting questions from your yeah. fans uh, in Turkey, across Europe, actually many, many interesting <laughs> topics uh, will come up, we'll discuss them. Just one thing before we start, you were the daughter of a former basketball player, right? Yes. Yeah. And you wanted, to, you wanted to take up on that sport, but you chose uh, volleyball instead? Yes, that's also true. Actually, my dad didn't want me to um, play any sports that's kind of in a contact, like he didn't want me to get hurt, like he was like, you're a girl, like volleyball will be safer for you, so you should play volleyball. But anyway, we didn't have a um, basketball club uh, back then in my city, so volleyball was the only option for me then. I wanted to, you know, like I wanted to ask you this and uh, tell to our followers, okay, we won because she chose volleyball, so we are all the volleyball yes. players, including me, we're very happy that you had like, made this decision. So I suggest we start with the questions and answers sure. from your fans. The first one is a very special question from a very special fan. <laughs> and I'd like okay. to make the question and before you answering, please try to guess who made it, okay? <laughs> okay, do I know them? You do indeed. So the question is, who is your favorite child? My favorite child? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's see if you, if you can guess it. Who made the question? If not, out. I'm not sure who made the question, but I'm pretty sure they know what the answer would be. <laughs> like my first child is my sister, like that. I have to say that because she's 10 years younger than me and I'm like a mom here to her. But okay. uh, my second favorite child is Arina, of course. <laughs> She's exactly. my child. <laughs> so actually, yeah, it was Arina. <laughs> <laughs> this question, so we were like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yes, no, we. It's just like um, it was very weird that uh, when she came here, it's like she's almost eleven years old, younger than me. So I was like, I feel like I'm your mom. <laughs> right. and she, we keep joking in that way. Yeah. Well, Arina, thank you as well for sending this question. <laughs> <laughs> Next one is: What do you often do before a match? Do you have a special ritual or something? um nothing special it's just like a, a normal routine like i eat on like at least four hours before the game uh, rest well um, listen to some music meditation um, at least 10 minutes if i have time or more too and that's it like just go through the papers like check what our tactics would be check all the videos just normal routine like everyone else yeah well if you had to change position uh, what would you choose? Asks another fan. I'd choose a setter. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I mean, I, I think that that's the dream of every outside hitter or uh, middle blocker or everyone like, who is not a setter. And if you ask any setters, like, uh, they would say, don't do it. <laughs> like, don't be a setter. It's the most difficult part. But I think we all just dream about being a setter. <laughs> But why is it like uh, this, you know? Uh... It's probably it's probably because this is the thing that we at, do uh, the least on the court. Like we don't set too many balls right. during the games and we just like just keep looking at it and we think that it might be too easy for us to do like if we try <laughs> and it's just something that we don't usually do. So it would be like a totally different approach to our game. So it's a challenge. It would be an interesting challenge. Yes. Um, <laughs> Another girl asks, how did volleyball affect your social life? But volleyball? Yeah, if, if, he, mm. if volleyball in some way affects your social life. Of course, of course it does. <laughs> I mean, generally, um, before uh, COVID, <laughs> it was already like we already had uh, pretty tough schedules during summers, also during the seasons in the clubs. So um, we don't have a lot of time to visit our families or our friends, but uh, we try to do the most. Like we try to choose our off days, to spend mostly with our closest friends and family, especially now against COVID, like uh, we stay even more at home. So uh, usually here and during the season, we have games every three days. So it's pretty difficult to get an off day. <laughs> but um, if like we get uh, an off day, like of course uh, we try or to meet our family at home or just stay at home and rest. 
I mean, that's what we can do for now. Relax a little bit more. Um, yeah. If you weren't playing volleyball, what career would you have pursued? Um, I'd probably go into medicine. That's interesting. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Um, while I was in school, I was always like very interested in um, chemistry, biology, and it was just like very fascinating to me, like learning about all the bones and all the muscles on the people's bodies. And it was like, I, I watched even too many documentaries and movies about it. Like it was just so fascinating for me. I think I would for sure pursue something yeah. around medicine, <laughs> maybe even forensics. <laughs> Actually, I was about to ask you about uh, that if you if you're following the most uh, famous TV series about medicine and stuff. Yeah, I used to watch a lot of them. Like, really, my yeah. childhood is filled <laughs> with those more than any romantic series. Like, I I missed all of those romantic ones. <laughs> a little bit of romantic, yeah. Uh, um, Nerfan asks, "How did you feel when you played your first match with the Turkish national team?" What was the feeling? Oh, wow. I, I will never forget that. Um, it was uh, in 2014 and it was in Ankara in front of our uh, own fans. So for me, it was like a huge thing. I was like 20 years old, but um, seeing like all of those fans like fill um, the whole gym and cheering for us, like the whole game, like I still remember the feeling like it was something really, really special. I'll never forget that. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, how did this motivate you to go further? I kept um, watching them even before uh, I got to the national team. Like I remember the Olympics when they first um, performed there. I remember the joy that I saw, like how they all play together, how they all keep fighting together. And um, I think everybody just uh, loves to see that and would love to experience that one day. And I was very, very um, happy to uh, be able to share that joy on that, with them on the court and with our fans like because the gym was really really filled with so many people and um it just uh motivates you to do even more like you just want to have and see that feeling again and again great you spent you've spent your entire career in turkey um mm -hmm. and turkish fans are one of the most passionate ones and supporting ones. yes they are <laughs> and i guess that you have had many many great moments with them one of them is asking uh what are your what are the best moments in your career? Like, uh... um, of course, um, they are uh, they are a few. Um, I for, for sure I would say exactly the one that we just talked about, like my first performance um, when I was uh, in the national team for the first time, and I will never forget the three years, the first three years um, in Fenerbahce, because um, we. <clears throat> I don't know. We, for me, it was a special team. Like all three years, we had a different team, but like the energy and the positivity in the team like was always the same. And we were all like really a big family and we won many cups during those three years. So it was tough during the times. There were like sad moments also, but we always kept being together and I'll never forget that. <clears throat> and all the cup that we won during those three years. And of course, I will never forget our tournament of um, fighting for the Olympic ticket in um, Holland. And I mean, the last, uh, I mean, every game was special. Of course, every game was very important. Like we had to win. First off, we started with a loss against Germany. So we had to win all of the next games to be able to go to the Olympics. So it was very, very stressful. But our team was just like so positive that we're going to make it. And I'll never forget those moments and that energy there. And of course, the last game against Germany when we won 3-0 and we won our um, Olympic ticket. I'll never forget that. Amazing. Yeah, we all remember, I believe, uh, <laughs> in Turkey from last year. I mean, the Euro volley. It was yeah, really, really cool. Um, talking about volleyball with the national team or maybe uh, also and on a club level, uh, we have another question here. Uh, what is your biggest dream? What is my biggest dream? Um, if I hadn't gone to the Olympics, for sure, I would say like going for the Olympics at least once. But um, since we already experienced that and it was um, a big success for us to go out of the group as the third uh, team between all of those very strong teams, like we had uh, China and USA in our groups, like and Italy, of course. Um, Russia, we beat Russia in a tie break. It was like uh, very special for us. 
But then um, in quarters, we lost to Korea, which we really, really expected that we could win. And it was a heartbreak for us because we were really, really hoping that after going third out of the group that we might be even going for the medal. But uh, since we didn't get that, of course, my dream now is um, medal on the next Olympics. Great. Well, wishing <laughs> you luck on that. Um, what is your dream team? It was like a question that really called my attention. And I was uh, like, okay, now we're going to see think about best <laughs> players. But I wish I could sit also and think about the players right now. It's just out of the blue. <laughs> um, okay. Um, <laughs> I'd say um, the best opposite for me for sure is Diana Boschkovic. Um, I I always admired her, um, her as a player. And um, when I when I was in Azaji back in uh, 2016 and 17, sorry, 17, 18, um, I got a chance to see how um, what a hard worker she is also um, in the club. And every day she's pushing and she's a real professional. So I really um, respect. Her work a lot so for sure she's um a number one opposite okay um uh kim young kong of course is uh, one of my favorite players as an outside um the second one i'd say uh jordan larson Great. and because i think she's also a complete player on her uh, position i learned a lot from her and i got a lot of help from her when we played together and Middle blockers, I'd say Eda Erdem, because I really, really enjoy playing with her. And she has been consistent for many years. Um, and I really, really respect that, respect her work also. Um, the second middle blocker would be Milena Rasic, for sure. Um, she has also been very, very stable uh, during uh, the most, uh, let's say, the hardest seasons for her. And she was very successful. Like She was always the best middle blocker everywhere she played yeah. and <clears throat> for the setter of course um i'm going to say maya uh because she is the legendary yeah, setter indeed. yeah <laughs> of course she is maya and that's it yeah <laughs> yes and for the libero um i i have a few uh favorites so it's just like uh, <laughs> a little bit difficult to say but um i want to say simge Okay. She is um, very. Um, she has a she's super positive person, and she has the high energy. Whenever she plays on the court, she fights with all her heart every time she plays, and I love to see that. <laughs> and to feel to feel that well. So far, most of your players are like from like a Balkan dream team from the Balkans. <laughs> yes, I mean, it's just they're the best in the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So oh, for uh, like uh, some quick questions uh, as we are uh, going towards the end of this uh, Q&A, uh, your, your favorite song? My favorite song? Oh, that's a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think I have um, a favorite song like during all my life. Like I have uh, a moment that I like a song and right now, like for a few months, my special song would be that and then I would change. What is it right now? now? What is it right now? It's a good question. <laughs> um, the one um, of uh, Dua Lipa and Elton John. Okay, okay. I I'll love make sure that one. to listen to it after we yes. finish. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure of the name of the song, but um, I love to listen to that song. It's I'll a great collaboration. Do you have a favorite book? My favorite book. Um, I mean, I love to read uh, biographies by uh, many uh, successful players. And I love uh, The Mindful Athlete. Um, this is a book that helped me a lot. Like there are just some times that uh, we just get so deep in our thoughts and sometimes we are too negative to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So um, this book kind of reminds me to look at some things from a different corner and I love it. I think every athlete should read it. That's a very important message. Do you believe that you can send this as a message to all our followers, to all our fans? Because even if they are not athletes, maybe they need this approach to life to look at. Of course. 
I mean, I mean, this book um, would help anyone. It's not just like about athletes, like especially athletes, of course, like it's all, um, there's a big part of it that's um, about mental strength, but uh, I think it can help also to um, everybody generally in life, just to look at the life from different aspects and not like look in a closed box kind of. So um, my mindful athlete it is. Okay, thank you very much. I believe this is a great message to wrap up uh, this uh, conversation. Good luck in the next uh, uh, stages of Champions League. We will be watching. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.